has incredible ways to deal with you because he knows your gift. He knows that he's making room for your gift. He knows what he's going to do. And sometimes you're going to be just clueless about it. Now, this is prophetic because we are in a different era. What's being so difficult for people is they're still trying to live in last season. That ain't going to happen. And I'm going to tell you that. We might as well know things have shifted and they are starting to accelerate. And you're going to have to say it, Lord, take me with it. Move me on in. Uh, I can either hide out. I can go try to... uh, I, was not, I, I wasn't any good being at home, so I've traveled for 40 years. You see what I mean? It wasn't his plan. He knew I wasn't supposed to do what the normal person was going to do. So I had to, and I, when I said that this morning, I had to overcome every fear. If I had a fear rise up, I did it. I just went ahead and stepped beyond it. Now, Fear is a spirit, and I want us to talk about it. It's both an, a valid emotion and a spirit. So you're going to have to get to a place in your life, especially going into this season ahead, that you can divide it. So that you don't get over into presumption, so you don't get careless. Matter of fact, before the group that went to Washington, D.C. in this last, and I, they asked me to send them out. And I said, I'm going to send you out, but this time it's not going to be what you think. That's how the Lord told me. I said, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get chaotic. You're going to have to look around every corner before you go around it. That was my exact word to it. Now, we're living in a different time. And I love the book of Daniel because it speaks to me so much about what the Lord is trying to get through to us right now, Daniel 7. We're going to look at it, and then I'm going to show you some things. And before you leave here tonight, you're going to be doing better. And you're going to just look up here and say, well, if God can pull him through, he can pull anybody through. I mean... We've got to know you're going to have to face things off. And that's what this says here in Daniel chapter 7. It says the Ancient of Days will come to a place that he will rise up. And I kept looking and I saw the Ancient of Days. Now, why did he keep looking? It goes on to say here in this particular passage, it says because what happens is The enemy, our enemy, chooses to wear down the minds of the saints. Now, if ever we have lived in a season, it is a season that the enemy has tried to wear your mind down. Now, your mind is just not up here. I mean, you need to have some sense up here. But your mind is right here. Put your hand right here on your heart. And it says the enemy would, through constant testings, wear down our minds where we can't even think straight. And before long, and it says how he'll do it. It says he'll change times and he'll change laws. See, the enemy is a legalist. And therefore, I love what I was saying this morning, how the Lord always has loopholes to get beyond the legalism of the enemy. He'll use legalism and he will use time to get us out of sync with our alignment with the Lord. He can do it for our nation. You see it all through the Word of God. But God. Everybody say, but God. God. Well, he has ways to keep us in his perfect timing. He has ways to keep us moving. And in the midst of our testing, he wants your thoughts, we prayed about it earlier, to be clear. 
He doesn't want you to be so scattered you can't get a good thought. See, the enemy, one of his curses is he scatters. We are coming into a season of gathering. And God's connecting people all over. He's doing incredible things to put us together in a new way. To link us together in a new way. So let me show you a few things as we move into this season ahead. Because it's very key, we understand we're going to have to be the light that is in this world. We're going to have to understand that we're going to have to be confident. Now, over in 1 John, see, you're going to have to get to know the Lord. I don't know what else to say to you. You're going to have to get to know Him. And when you have thoughts that aren't Him, you're going to have to let people say, but that's not what God's like people who know it, so that all of a sudden you can say, then I need to know him. You can help them when they say, I need to know them. You can say, let me show you. Let me lead you into a place so all of a sudden that which you're thinking can shift. See, we're having to be used right now in new ways and lots of new opportunities out there for you. So let me show you this. Let me go back over a couple of things with you to catch up. Now, we've got some new books that are help, will help you greatly, and I try to make sure you get those books, and I do it with joy. I, might, I try to make sure you get those books so that they help you because they're going to tell you what China's going to be doing. You don't want to run stick your head in... Uh, in the sand somewhere and doesn't think and not think that China's raising up economic structures and eventually that them and Russia start warring for control. And we have to see that. We have to understand that. I've worked in both countries since the 80s. And so once you start seeing what's out there. A lot of us have a hard time seeing beyond our fear. And I, I remember getting one time on an airplane. Before I got on the airplane, I, we had to make a big shift in our family. And so Brian Corman, who's been with me 25 years, and Pam and another lady had been working with us for a long time, and myself, we said, well, we're going to fast and pray for three days. We're going to ask the Lord to give us revelation over how we shift. It was at the end of July, and we had to make some decisions. And I was speaking in Washington State, and uh, so I was just telling Pam that. I said, she said, how have you done on this fast? I said, well, just the way you think I've done on this fast. I've hated every second of this. <laughs> but we've made it through two days. That was my exact word. Then we get on the plane. All of a sudden, we take off and we're flying. It's a, a, a large plane. And they make an announcement that the plane's on fire. And that uh, we've got some big problems. And uh, I'm just sitting there and saying, Lord. And they said, we're, uh, you're going to have to brace as if we're going to crash or explode. I mean, it was the big, it was the full mill deal. And uh, so well, I've had lots of bad plane flies, but this was different. And they said, we're going to dump out as much fuel and hopefully that it won't catch on fire when we're trying to dump it out so we can turn around and go back to the airport. So we're in this process and I'm just sitting there re reading. Well, we have to brace, we have to do all that. It's sort of dramatic. And we land and this guy that is sitting next to me in first class said, you must be a Christian. I said, uh, devoted. And I said, why would you say that? He said, well, I just noticed how calm and confident you were. 
He said, why were you so confident that we weren't going to die? I said, well, hopefully you'll understand this. I said, the Lord has put me on a three-day fast. I said, I just finished the second day. And I know the Lord well enough that he's going to make me finish the third day. That guy started laughing so hard. He said, I would, that was not the answer I was going to expect. I said, I know him too well. I know him. He wasn't going to let me die. He wouldn't let me go out this easy. 